Okay, I've just been to Morrison's. They do flat irons here. Twelve thirty-three a kilo. Not bad. I paid thirty pounds a kilo from one butcher, but he does do the same one as the flat iron restaurants, which is really good in London. They're twelve pounds for probably about that much, which seems like a rip off, but it isn't. It's a good quality steak. It's a good. They cook it really well, and it's a nice environment to go to London. This is a ribeye. I love ribeye. You can get this as tender, if not more, if you cook it right. Now, same price, four fifty. A lot of people complain that these have some smaller version underneath. Yeah, they do. Look, it's a smaller steak there, but it doesn't matter because, well, it doesn't matter to me because what I normally do is to season it, which I do in a minute, barbecue it, and then slice it, and people take pieces of it. And so, unless you're really greedy, yeah, we'll get a bit. Of course, the ribeye the fat is lovely. So. I do is open these up, take off any sinew because uh, there's a bit of silver skin on this stuff. This one should be okay. And then I'm going to make some slices, diagonals, and I'm going to cover it in this stuff and let it sit for a while. I then refrigerate it, take it out 30 minutes before cooking the barbecue. It's a maze balls. So the first thing you notice with the flat iron, um, as I said, they're not quite the same size. And you see this connected tissue down the middle? That's a bit gristy. So probably what I'm doing is I'm going to fillet it down there or cut it down there. This doesn't need anything done, it's normally good, but I'll cut it down that middle bit just there and we'll see what we get to. Okay, so you can see I've made the uh, diagonal cuts into it and I've taken this sort of stuff. You see it's got like connected tissue. I mean, you can still cook it, it's okay, but I think the cats will like that. If you have a dog, it will like it. Um, but that just helps the flavour get in, stops it, um, it stops it shrinking so much or at least bending up. Don't need to do much to this. That fat there will render nicely, as you know. This will be okay. This stuff will be chewy, yeah. And you and this is where people say, oh, it's a chewy steak. Yeah, of course it is if you don't prepare it. But when you cook this, I do this on about 350 degrees Celsius on a, on a barbecue. About a minute, maybe two. About, no, this is not that fixed. About a minute each side. Um, and I'll give it about four minutes in the indirect heat. This one I'll probably do for about a minute and a half half each side although I often get thicker ones that are like one and a half inch thick get a nice char on it and then let it heat and then rest it for about a good five ten minutes and then you'll get beautifully tender steak so that's the plan I'm gonna have a oh yeah I've got to put this stuff on here so a nice layer of pepper on there you can never have too much now we're gonna put some salt on that will help dry it out and of course I'll now flip it over do the other side the same yeah. you can take it quite well so it no problem with putting the salt on. Okay, we put some garlic, uh, onion granules on there. It gives it a nice taste. And it will soak in. And then quite a bit of garlic. You know, no problem with garlic. Seems like a lot, but it's not. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, rest the... I'll, put, I'll flip them over and put more salt and pepper on. And I'll leave this to soak in on top of each other in these little boxes here. And that will have about a few hours to marinate. It'll be cool. Okay, it's just in the pot. I put the lid on, put that in the fridge, leave that for a while to do its business. Mostly it'll soak in and you get really good flavour throughout it. So yeah, really glad they're doing flat iron at Morrison's. It makes it easy to go to the butchers. Okay, cheers. Bye-bye. That's the final product when it's been cooked. It looks pretty good to me. I'm sure it's probably nicely prepared. It's fine, it looks like inside. Yeah, it's good and full of juice. I'll enjoy some of my homemade lager. The Czech lager's come out quite nice. It's cold, it's bubbling. That'll go well with the steak. Just wonder where my daughter and son-in-law are. They're supposed to be here to drink it with me. But anyway, tough luck. I'm having it.